I'm probably one of the more unique artists in that I was actually looking for a dark space with no light. So that really led me specifically to find this particular space here because I wanted to work with light and projection. And I've been here since 2020. So this space was kind of my savior in lockdown. It was my little private space that I could come away to and um, yeah, explore my art practice. And it's been um, a wonderful place to play and explore and make a mess and tidy it up and start again. And it's really allowed me to push more into installation and projection in a way that I found I was very restricted to do so in the facilities I had available at uni. So my work intrinsically aims to try and alter people's state of consciousness and shift them into a different way of seeing and perceiving the world so they can have a different related experience. And immersive installations, which are multi-sensory, give really the most potential to do that because you're operating on many, many different senses to give an integrated experience that allow you to alter a state of mind. So this film takes every affirmation that I wrote over a course of six months in conjunction with ChatGPT, I took those affirmations and I inverted them to a, a negative affirmation to really show the subtext of the fears that were underneath the things that I was affirming every day. This avatar which I created using images of my face really falls into a descent into a more maladaptive state of, of consciousness. And I think that the, the stories and the affirmations that this avatar makes really can resonate with people universally. And it brings up a lot of universal themes of, of, of fears we have relating to ourselves, to our identity, to our self-image, to our careers and to our family. So historically, I've spent a lot more time exploring the more adaptive states of consciousness, such as exploring meditation or trance. But a series of life events uh, that have happened over the last year, most recently being the passing of one of my oldest friends, Katrina Arnold, also known as Virginia the Wolf, has led me to more deeply explore the maladaptive states. So looking into grief and looking into loss and looking into more challenging states of, of mental health. And it's really been a really healing process for me. So I've been able to put my grief and my pain into my art and actually see the world through a very different lens, which I think gives me a greater sense of empathy with people, which I haven't had before. I was really obsessed with ink and working with ink and water and using ink as a means to enter into a flow state. And this particular visual I, I made for my birthday party um, and it happened to be on the, the day that Kat died that I actually made this projection and it's bright green and black and they were her favourite colours and it feels like there's this kind of crazy synchronicity going through and and the art and somehow imitating life or creating through cat. I, I don't know, but I wanted to, to show it uh, because of that. Pain filters my body with open wounds into my forgiving flesh. As if life were too close, it suppressed eyes, which to me reads now like a dark night of the soul, a sort of death of the ego of the self that happens before we have to be reborn and hence death not being thy enemy.